Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a service of worship led by local pastors and members of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. MSL Northland is locally produced with a message for the world. Hi, I'm Pastor John Bonk, Shepherd of the Lake, a couple of harbors. We are now broadcasting My Savior Lives Northland. Same program, same good law gospel, same message, same format, but it's not, it's gonna stay locally produced. The change is that when you make out checks and you donate because it's only you, local viewers, that keep us going, is you need to make them to MSL Northland. No longer do we have the old name. So, it's a new beginning and yet it's the same program. Today on MSL Northland, we're gonna talk about reconciliation. How does that happen? How can it be more effective? How does Jesus bring us into that? But first, we have a hymn to watch, and I'll be back. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. He is mighty to say forever, author of salvation, heroes and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, fill beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us. Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 33. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that the wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will be upon you, and I'll require it at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his ways, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die of his iniquity, and you shall have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 13, the first verse. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is a servant of God, an avenger, who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing, to pay to all what is owed them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling the, of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading for this Sunday is from St. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 20. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in his midst of them, and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it'd be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptation to sin, for it is necessary that temptation comes, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. For if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands and two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he leave the 99 on the mountain and go and search for the one that wants to ray? Yes. And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of the Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. 
If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them and tell it to the church, and if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where there are two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Father, you act in reconciling us to your son. Use that love in our lives that we might be reconciled to one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved in the Lord. How many of you have lost a loved one or a friend because of an argument, a disagreement, and feelings got hurt? History is repeat with that. The Hatfields and the McCoys feuded, killed. He couldn't even remember while the feud started. Would you like to solve that in your family's life? Sometimes preachers ask dumb questions. Of course you'd want to solve that in your family's life. Today's text deals with that. Just one specific part. 
If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you've gained your brother. Seems simple, doesn't it? All you got to do is go tell the person what he did wrong or she did wrong. She says, I'm sorry, and it's fixed. Here's the problem. We don't. We don't do it. Instead, the first thing we do is go to our friend and say, do you know what so-and-so said? Do you know what so-and-so did? I know, y'all probably have never done that. Do you know what sarcasm is? That was sarcasm. I know you have. Instead of going to the individual and saying, this is a problem, Instead, we tell our friend. We tell ourselves. How does it say it? If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Not involving a bunch of other people. Involving just two people. You and the individual. Why don't we? Doesn't that sound easy? I mean, come on. Just go and do it. Well, he might get angry at me. He might not hear the words. And then sometimes, in our own mind, we paint them with a black stroke. They are so bad that they said this. I'm going to hold it against them until they say they're sorry to me. I failed in that one more than once with friends, with family members. And the hurt that that causes in the long-term difficulty is painful. Where if I'd have heeded what God said, go and tell them to begin with, but what happens? If he listens to you, you gain your brother. It takes one to initiate peace. One to initiate reconciliation. The problem for me, and I don't know about you, but the problem for me is usually pride. Almost always. I was wronged. But, in truth, there are always two sides to a story. And the first thing we need to ask ourselves when we've been wronged, and this is the tough one, because it takes honest looking inside, how did I contribute to this? What did I do? Not saying it's all my fault, but there's always two sides. And then we remember when we go to tell them, when we go to speak to our friend, it isn't to punish them. You wronged me. It's to reconcile them. That they might see what the hurt that's been caused and they might say, I'm sorry. A step really not mentioned is when we deal with this sin before we go to our brother. When we deal with our sin before we go to our brother. What? I have. Yes. We are sinners. In every action we do, there is something not of the love of God. Usually it's the second we've sinned, we go tell our friend, our spouse, our neighbor, our family member about Joe. Sorry, Joe. No offense meant. Imagine if Jesus dealt with us in this manner. Imagine if Jesus came to us 
continually with a stick and said, hey, you're messing up with that person. Hey, you're messing up with me. Hey, but he doesn't. Instead, he sends his spirit through his word to convict my heart of the sin that I have done wrong. That I might do what? That I might repent. The purpose is always reconciliation. God's purpose is sending His Spirit is always reconciliation. So our purpose in going to our brother should always be, say it with me, reconciliation. When I think of this, I think of David and Nathan. David, the great king, who'd done great things wrote the Psalms, worshiped, wanted to build a temple for God, brought the ark to Jerusalem, oh, killed Goliath, sang Psalms, and then committed that sin with Bathsheba. And then when she became pregnant, had Uriah killed in front of the army. But he was a king, he could do what he wanted to do. God loved him, he did great things. It isn't until Nathan the prophet comes and tells him the story of the rich man and the poor man. And the poor man had a lamb. And that lamb ate with the family, slept with his kids. One day the rich man had a friend visit, didn't have anything, so he went and took the poor man's lamb, killed it, slaughtered it, fed it to his friend. And Nathan said, what should the king do to the rich man? And David said, he should die. And Nathan looked at him and said, you are the man. The spirit convicted David that he was the man, that he had sinned against, I've sinned against God, he said not just against Bathsheba, I've sinned against God. And Nathan said, your sins are forgiven. Notice that. Nathan said to him, your sin is forgiven. Sometimes when somebody says, hey, I'm sorry I did that to him, we just say these words. Tell me if you haven't said it. It's okay. It's not okay. Why do we say that? What should we say? In response to someone confessing that they've done something wrong to us, what should we say? Come on, Lutherans. This one's not hard. I forgive you. When someone says they've done something wrong, we need to say to them, I forgive you. Say this with me. I forgive you. Don't lose those words. They are powerful. And when we announce that forgiveness, we need to let it go. Truly, forgiven is forgotten. I've sent it to a few people and they've said to me, well, I'm not going to forgive them because they didn't say they're sorry or they didn't mean it. What if God operated that way? What if God operated in the manner that he waited for us to finally say we've done the wrong thing? But God doesn't do that. God acts first. God acts sacrificially. God sends his son to the cross to die for the sins of the world. God acts. And how does it say in Scripture? While we were enemies, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we didn't deserve it, He did it. He didn't say, I'll wait for the world to say they're sorry and then I'll reconcile. No, He acted in our behalf. 
In fact, it gets to the whole point of why we do repent, why we do say we're sorry. Do we say we're sorry because God is up there with a stick saying, if you don't say you're sorry, I'm going to punish you. Or like often our children do, probably we have too, said we're sorry because we were caught. No. That's not why we say we're sorry. We say we're sorry because God is merciful. His steadfast love endures forever. We apologize because God forgives us. If we've been reconciled by the acts of God, then should not we be reconcilers? Think about those in your life that you need to go to. Pray about it. Ask yourself, what have I contributed to this? And then deal with the issue. And when that's done, say those words, I forgive you. Or accept those words when they say to you, your sins are forgiven. We are people of reconciliation. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, with his blood, may the everlasting last will and testament equip you with every good thing you need to do what he wants us to do, working in us through Jesus Christ, that which pleases him to be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you join me in Luther's morning prayer? I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend my self, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe would have no power over me. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Whose Father? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Just as I said at the beginning of today's broadcast, we are now My Savior Lives Northland, MSL Northland. Same broadcast, new name. If you want to contribute, you can go to our webpage, uh, mslnorthland.com, and hit the donate button. That'll help us keep this program on because we are locally produced and locally funded. Thank you for your help and support. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information about a church in your area, or if this program has been a blessing to you, please send comments and contributions to MSL Northland, CO Mount Olive Lutheran Church, 2012 East Superior Street, Duluth, Minnesota, 55812. We appreciate your support and prayers for this ministry. My Savior Lives Northland is a production of Stokes Media House in conjunction with the Wisconsin and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and supported by viewers like you.